Climate change is at the top of the policy agenda both here in Brussels and across the globe. But until now, the focus has been almost exclusively on reducing carbon dioxide, or CO2. There are, however, many other global warmers that are causing climate change. Black carbon, more commonly known as soot, is one of those warmers. And there is a belief among many in the scientific community that more could be done to reduce it. Eric Johnson, author of a recent scientific review on this topic, explains. Right, carbon dioxide, or CO2, is the primary global warmer. It accounts for something like 80% of all global warming. Uh, then in second place comes methane, and then behind that, or in front of it, depending on which study you've happened to read that day, is uh, black carbon. The thing about black carbon that makes it quite different from CO2 is that it washes out of the atmosphere in anywhere from two to, say, five weeks. And so it works on a very short-term basis, whereas carbon dioxide is up in the atmosphere for 100, 150 years. Some scientists are arguing that the short lifespan of black carbon and its previously little understood effect on the climate offers a significant opportunity to reduce global warming, especially with the Arctic and Himalayan ice melt. Perhaps policymakers are missing an important piece of the puzzle. A recent conference at the European Parliament, chaired by MEP Graham Watson, focused on this issue. In terms of climate change, we used to think about global climate change. If you, talk CO, if you talk about CO2, that's what we have to do. But if you talk about black carbon, other things, it's the regional impacts, like on the Arctic, like on the Indian monsoon, like on the Himalayan, which are probably more important to watch than just the global uh, average impacts. Uh, our motivation was indeed the observation that a very strong increase in temperature in the northern hemisphere and this very, very rapid melting of ice, which can't be explained by CO2 alone. And interesting indeed is this correlation or this, this guess, this really educated guess, saying black carbon could be uh, the main reason that we have this quick melting of Arctic ice. There are plenty of reasons to reduce emissions of black carbon, health, climate, uh, precipitation, all these things. And it would be, uh, well, certainly a non-regret policy measure to do, uh, it would have uh, plenty of benefits. The question is, you know, what kinds of policies can we look at, maybe on a, on a global level, to deal with, uh, with black carbon, and where should the international community uh, focus its efforts? Um, firstly, there's an urgent need to still build the capacity of the science, not least in developing countries. And of course, if we can bring greater precision to the precise contribution that black carbon is actually making to global warming, uh, then in a sense, this can start opening the door to looking at black carbon within, say, some kind of carbon fund as we have for reduced emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Despite this need for more focus on reducing black carbon, there has been a lack of political will among many policymakers, a fact that was noted by one of the attending MEPs. Neither political establishment nor, nor administration of the climate negotiators, they were not interested in this. And they were reluctant to, to read these articles. And I was wondering if there are some kind of ideological reasons behind this. Everything else equal. Um, uh, the, the climate case for the black carbon is more complicated to make politically than, than, than for CO2. I think we should... Uh, uh, let's say, be careful about reverse error or turning upside down the priorities uh, at this stage. I perhaps get the um, feeling that for a lot of politicians that uh, they are nervous uh, if we take our eye off uh, the CO2 ball uh, and transfer it to a different uh, uh, format. So maybe I'd slip what you said around into saying, look, it's not just CO2. Um, and clearly, if we're going to actually deal with climate change, given the urgency of it and given how slow things are progressing on CO2, we probably need to bring everything into the, uh, the arsenal uh, of, uh, of, of our weaponry to actually uh, combat climate change. With two further scientific assessments on the link between black carbon and climate change due to be released in the next year, there will no doubt be further calls from the scientific community to give this issue appropriate consideration in the policy response to climate change. However, some scientists believe that the time for action is right now. So there are many reasons to reduce black carbon, and I would say let's just do it. I mean, it's a no-regret uh, policy to reduce uh, black carbon.